Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Alhatham's playstyle is the kind that will reward you if you can optimize it properly. I think it's pretty on brand for him to make us use our brain cells while fighting with him, but it leaves us with a lot to think about. So I want to further explore his potential attack combos and rotations in this video. Although I'll recap some essential concepts about Alhatham's kit, you should definitely watch my first guide if you haven't already to at least gain a good base understanding of him. This will also generally be about maximizing Alhatham's personal damage, which might not feel as important in a Bloom-based team, wherein most of the team DPS comes from Dendro Course anyway. Of course, using more optimized combos can still be applied in such teams, but if Alhatham is driving other abilities like Singcho or Yelan in order to proc Blooms, Alhatham's combos and mirror uptimes are way more forgiving for his dendro application. It's in his spread teams where you do want to maximize his spread reactions and damage more. Let's also establish the simplified nomenclature of certain attacks and abilities so you can understand what they mean. I'll flash them now on screen which you can pause. With that out of the way, let's get into this deep dive of Alhatham's text. Let's just recap what the importance of his mirrors are and why maximizing their uptime is one key aspect to mastering his playstyle. Aside from having Dendro Infusion when a mirror is active, Alhatham also does these projection attacks whenever he does auto attacks. The number of hits a projection attack does corresponds to how many mirrors there are. With a maximum of 3 mirrors, each projection attack does 3 hits. More hits means more damage and more spread reactions that can be triggered. At C0, there are 4 ways of generating Alhatham's mirrors. Casting his skill, which has an 18 second cooldown, casting his burst, which also has an 18 second cooldown, or using a charged attack, or a plunge attack, which has a 12 second cooldown for generating mirrors. But mirrors expire at 4 second intervals, which is where the tricky part and potential to optimize his combos begin. By interspersing his burst, skill, and charged or plunge attack at the intervals when the mirrors are about to expire or have expired, you will be able to keep up 3 mirrors for the most part, if not his entire on-field rotation time. So let's say you don't pay attention to this, and at the start of his combo, you use his burst, skill, and charge attack right after another. While he gets 3 mirrors at the start, later on in his rotation he will have no way to regenerate a new mirror, which leads to him doing progressively less and less hits on his projection attacks. This ends up not being able to effectively maximize his 3 mirror uptime. That's why generally speaking, it's ideal to spread out the abilities that generate mirrors in a way that keeps him at 3 mirrors for a long time, which I'll show very soon. However, it's not the end of the world if you sometimes miss or forget to do the timings perfectly. Sure, you might lose some damage, but if it's a minor mistake, then that lost damage can be minor as well. Alhatham can still be somewhat forgiving to play even if you can't execute the perfect rotation every single time. But optimal combos are nonetheless rewarding. Also, it doesn't necessarily have to be always the case that you need to constantly maintain max mirrors, as there are some rotations in playstyles that won't heavily depend on having constant 3 mirrors. So let's break it down on how to further optimize him. We'll start with his most fundamental combos and timings for an on-field DPS playstyle, which you'll probably see often recommended. The most basic way to get him started is to cast his burst without mirrors since by doing so it will generate 3 mirrors for him. Now one important aspect to note about Alhatham's burst is that there is a 2 second delay between his burst and the mirror spawning. After the close up animation, there aren't any mirrors yet, but your character can already move or do actions even while his burst is still dealing damage. Then 2 seconds later, the mirrors should appear. There are a few different ways to work with that 2 second delay. By default, you can simply wait out the delay and start attacking already. This will result in a few physical damage hits because there are still no mirrors, hence there are no infusion and projection attacks happening. Then once those mirrors spawn, he'll start his dendro infusion already and you can start piling on his dendro attacks. Another interesting alternative is that during these 2 seconds, you can actually switch to another character, and then if you switch back to Alhatham before the mirrors are supposed to spawn, they will be created. This introduces a new way to use that downtime, which is to insert another unit skill in the middle of his combo. So for example, if he's comped with Kuki, I can use Alhatham's burst, swap out to Kuki's skill, then swap back into Alhatham. Another example is quick swap Dendro Traveler's skill to generate particles and then switch back to Alhatham, which then funnels the particles to his burst cost. The main advantage of doing this quick swap tech is that it's a very efficient way of compressing your rotation and replacing Alhatham's physical damage hits with something more useful. 
However, this comes with considerations and risks. One, you will really want to have low ping in order to reliably and consistently execute this. I tried it with a ping of 200 and I ran into issues where I could not consistently do this trick, likely due to the latency or delay created by high ping. Second, if the character you switch into gets interrupted, staggered, frozen, and so on, you won't be able to switch back as fast as usual. This also is the case if the animation time of the teammate's ability is too long. This runs the risk of missing the three mirrors generation, which can ruin your combo. Three, this also depends on player skill and input. Even if your ping is good, if the player's reflex isn't consistent enough to execute this, then it's better to just avoid doing it. In summary, it's a great tactic only if you can do it correctly and consistently. The third way to work with a burst to mirror delay is to already start the mirror generation by using his skill right after the burst. This might seem counterintuitive at first, but let me explain. By doing his skill right away, Alhazen will gain two mirrors and can immediately start dealing denjo damage with his auto attacks. This will give him one instance of two mirror projection attacks. Then his third mirror will come from his burst two seconds after. Then he can start doing his three mirror attacks and the time duration of the three mirrors will have been refreshed. However, since you've already used his burst and skill, the only way to regenerate that third mirror is via his charge or plunge attack later on. So then why use this combo? The very simple answer is that it results in a quicker and tighter on-field time of about 12 to 13 seconds. A shorter Alhazen field time could also line up better with the buffs, abilities, and rotation of his team. This is a good option if you don't have the liberty of low ping and you want to condense or compress your team rotation. And he's dealing dendro damage from start to finish, which also means getting as many dendro applications and spread reactions possible within that duration. So now that we have these three possible starts to his basic attack combo, let's get into how to execute the rest of it. Here's what I think is the most staple beginner combo and timings that every Alhaitha main will want to learn. First, start the burst with no mirrors. Then you'll have about 2 seconds of physical damage normal attacks, and then the 3 mirrors spawn starting the dendro infusion. After about 4 seconds, refresh the 3rd mirror with the skill or charged attack. Then do more normal attacks for 3 to 4 more seconds, and then refresh a mirror again, and then more normal attacks. If you noticed or reviewed the footage, you can also see that throughout the entire combo, six projection attacks were triggered. Five of them were the three mirror versions, and the last two mirror hit was at the end of it already. That indicates a pretty successful uptime of max mirrors. This does result in a total field time of 14 to 17 seconds depending on your speed of execution, which is relatively longer than the usual duration of an on-field DPS. If you want to do the quick swap trick, then it's just a matter of inserting it right after Alhatham's burst. Then timings and on-field duration will still remain the same. Then in this shorter combo where we use the burst and skill right after one another, the timings will now change. Start with Alhatham's burst with no mirrors, then immediately do a skill or an N1C to gain mirrors and start the dendro infusion. Start doing normal attacks right away. The mirrors from his burst will appear during that time as you're doing normal attacks. 4 seconds after, use his skill or charged attack to refresh a mirror, and then do normal attacks for 4 more seconds. The amount of projection attacks were still the same, but there is one less hit done since only 4 of them were the 3 mirror version, while the first and last projection attacks were the 2 mirror version. However, this results in a quicker on-field time, which again, can be favorable in various scenarios. These basic combos are the bread and butter of Alhatham's on-field DPS playstyle. However, there are more ways to push it. The next thing we can optimize further are his normal attack combos. Generally speaking, spamming Alhatham's dendro-infused normal attacks will already output a good amount of damage, as long as his mirror generation's timing is well managed. His normal attacks apply dendro after all, and they have a standard ICD of 3 hits or every 2.5 seconds, so he naturally gets lots of spread reactions from his attack strings. However, there are certain attack strings that are faster due to animation time and can net you more spread reactions due to ICD timing. They will also vary in stamina consumption since you will generally separate strings with dash cancels. 
This isn't as central to Alhatham's gameplay in comparison to his mirror uptime, so there won't be a huge difference if you decide to ignore normal attack combos. Learning these is just an extra step, but can again feel rewarding and satisfying if executed well. With that, let's examine his normal attack combos. The two-hit combo is short and fast, but doing it repeatedly by dash cancelling will consume stamina very quickly. The three-hit combo actually gets four damage instances in due to the third hit having two strikes. This is quite convenient, more stylish, and repeating it won't be as heavy on stamina. You can time your dash cancel according to his kick. Then, a 4-hit will be the longest recommendable attack string since its animation isn't as long as the 5th hit, so it's still a possible option. Completing the 5-hit combo is the least recommended due to Alhatham's 5th hit having a long animation time, which can slow down how fast you reapply Denger with his normal attacks. Among these options, N3 is what I recommend the most if you want an easy-to-repeat combo that consumes only a moderate amount of stamina. There can still be cases of doing N2 or N4, but generally speaking, try to avoid having to do the N5 attack. Of course, I didn't forget about his charged attacks. Remember though that the first charged attack in your combo will generate a mirror, so be deliberate about timing it. Anyway, his charge attack has two instances of damage. However, its ICD is peculiar to take note of. Let's break it down with this sample clip of spamming charged attacks. We'll do an N1C combo and repeat it three times. First, notice that his normal attack and charged attack hits can trigger spreads consecutively, which means their ICD is counted separately. This also means that when distributed a certain way between normal attacks, they can potentially squeeze in more spread reactions. So why not spam N1C for max spreads? Let's look closer. In the first N1C, you can see that the first charged attack hit triggered a spread, but the second one didn't. In the second N1C, you can see that neither charged attack hits triggered a spread. If this were a standard ICD, then the latter charge attack should have triggered a spread. In the third N1C, you'll see that the first charge attack hit triggered the spread, but the second one didn't. So it either seems to be on a 4 hit or at maybe even a 2.5 second ICD, therefore spamming it isn't going to get spreads every time, and doing so can end up being less optimal and unnecessarily costly with your stamina. Still, inserting them at certain intervals can be useful for your combo. The full combos that I personally like to use and find good spread distribution with are these two. Then here's the shorter version where you use the skill right away after the burst. Overall, these combos have a good balance of manageable stamina consumption, spread reactions, and an attack string that's relatively easy to execute. But feel free to experiment further to find your own preferred rhythm. Of course, you don't always have to use the burst first combo in every team he's in. He can change the order of his abilities in order to adapt his rotation time to a particular team or change his playstyle a bit. For example, if you want to really maximize his burst, then it should be used when you have two or three mirrors active. This skews his damage source towards his burst then, but in teams where he can fulfill a more quick swap burst playstyle, this is viable. It won't necessarily have the similar DPS of his on field, but it might be better suited to the team you're trying to play him in. In this case, some very efficient ways of getting mirrors while already proccing a projection attack are either aiming his E to do a quick low plunge or doing an N1C. Another way is to adapt his basic attack combos into shorter versions to allow more flexible swapping between teammates. In this example, I used his skill to start a combo of two mirrors, swapped out, and later used his burst to start a combo of three mirrors, prolonged by his charged attack. And that's it for this video. These are what I've determined so far from personal testing. But once you're well acquainted with Alhatham's basic mechanics, there can be a lot for you to test when it comes to slotting him into different kinds of team rotations. Alhatham did just come out, which means there's plenty of room for experimentation. So if there are better combos and attack strings to try, I look forward to their potential. If you have Alhatham, I'm interested to know how you feel about the potential complexity of his gameplay so far. Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care!